Hello fellow problem solvers. So there are we doing a technique building problem. I suggest you try this number theory problem out for a minimum for about 20-ish minutes. And now let's begin. So how would we so we say solve this equation in the integers x and y, which means find integers x and y would satisfy this equation. So what do we see here? Well, first thing we say, wait a second, x and y, x squared, y squared, these are always positive because we're in the integers, they'll be greater than or equal to zero. Maybe we can bound something, say like x and y can be very big because of this x squared and y squared. However, remember, we're in the integers and then you'll see, ah, oh, but if one of them is negative, then this thing could drag us down back to one. So we can't make that sort of bounding argument. And you might think, okay, let me try another thing. Let me see divisibility. x divides 3y squared minus 1. y divides this and this, so it divides x squared minus 1. Is there something I can do with that? x divides this, y divides that. Huh, it doesn't seem like it. Well, wait a second, x and y, what can they have in common? Well, if x and y are divisible by some d, then d divides this, this, this. Actually, d squared divides this, this, and this. d squared divides one, so they can only have one in common, which means they're relatively prime. And now, y divides x squared minus one. Is there something we can do with that? Potentially, maybe. Uh, it's fuzzy, right? It's not something that's clearly visible right away. And then you might say, okay, I don't seem to be having this. So I need to do something else. And this is actually what I want to say here before I like starting out the solution is if you're trying out different things and it's not failing, that does not show that you're a failure in mathematics or that you can't do problems. It just shows you're problem solving. You know, you're not, you didn't get lucky on your first shot. You try a bunch of other different shots, a bunch of other different techniques again and again, and then you might get it at some point or you might not but it's a normal process that you go through. So then you might say, to go back to the problem is, okay, I have two xy. How can I get rid of this two xy? And you see, wait, I have x squared. If I have y squared, I can complete the squares. So I can write this down as x squared plus two xy plus y squared plus two y squared is equal to one. And then this is x plus y squared and then this is plus 2y squared is equal to 1. And now we can say, oh wait, if y, if the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 1, then y squared is greater than or equal to 1, and then 2y squared is greater than or equal to 2. However, x plus y squared is greater than or equal to 0, so this would give us a contradiction. Or in other words, if you want to go down this route, this is greater than or equal to 2y squared plus 0, and so y squared is less than or equal to a half, which means that y needs to be equal to zero because y is an integer. And from there, y is zero, and then we, can, then we have this equation x squared is equal to one, and then x is either one or negative one, so it's plus or minus one. And then we have two solutions, x and y being one and zero, or minus one and zero. And this is one way of going about it. It's technique building what we're doing right now. So the second way to go about this is to, is actually maybe more generalizable technique is to say, wait a second, for every solution that I have that's X and Y, it's like I first, I can first pick a Y and that for that Y, I have a corresponding X that's good. So then let me look at this like once I pick a y, what is this? If y is say one, what does this become? It becomes a quadratic in x. And so you can look at y as just a variable, but more, more so you can say it's a big variable and you can still look at this as a quadratic in x and you'll get that the discriminant of this quadratic, this is x squared plus x times two y plus three y squared minus one is equal to zero. What is the discriminant here? We need to have integer solutions, so the discriminant needs to be positive and it needs to be a square. And the discriminant is b squared, which is 4y squared, minus 4 times this, minus 4 times 3 is, uh, actually it's 4 times 3y squared, 
and then plus, minus one, plus one, so we have a plus four. This is the discriminant now. And what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to four times y squared minus three y squared, we get minus two y squared. So we get minus two y squared, we get a one, one minus two y squared. This needs to be greater than or equal to zero. What does that mean? The answer is, it means if the discriminant needs to be greater than or equal to zero, that means that we have one minus two y squared needs to be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, one greater than or equal to two y squared, one half less than or equal to y squared. In other words, y is equal to zero. And then we can solve as we did before. We have, of course, we have x squared is equal to one. Now this finishes up our technique building problem. And these are two approaches. The important thing when you're building technique is one, you notice this, you learn these approaches because you're trying out different problems, then you know them, then when you see another problem that's similar to this one, or part of a problem that's similar to this one, you can try out this technique. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.